Hey! Welcome back subscribers. Welcome new subscribers. Like, comment, subscribe if you find this interesting. And without further ado, on to vintage costume jewelry, identification, tips, tricks, and more. And finally, the giveaway. See you on the flip side. Remember, if I'm not here, check out my other channel down below in the description. So without further ado, on to making money. All right. So I'm just going to give you some tips, tricks, or some information about vintage jewelry that might help you find some items that you can flip. First of all, let's start with the backings. As you can see, this is the screw back, but it's also a clip back. So you have the double feature. Here you have the option to either screw it through to double facet it with the clip or without. You can even see the ridges on the screw right there. It is a later version. It isn't the original screw backs, which would be more so this type of screw back. And if you put it sideways here, you can see right there the screw and you just turn and turn and it'll just get tighter. This is going to be more of the um, early 1900s. Then you have these ones. These ones would be the 30s. You can see by the backing clip also these ones. You can see the clip there as well as let's see some of these as you can see the backings usually can be signed of course sign is de signed as designer they're worth a little bit more here these three this is cloison sorry if I didn't pronounce it right but that's when they put in the lines They'll trace out the lines here, and then with enamel paint, they go in and fill each one. And that's how you know in, um, that it's cloisonne and an enamel painted. And then when it's circular like this, these are button earrings. And then again, you have the backing. Now, not to be mixed up with these, which these are reproductions. Of course, we still buy them because they're animals and animals sell. However, if you look at the back of these, you see that clip on the back, I mean, the stopper? This stopper here is actually more modern than the average one because the average, the, the, I mean, the vintage ones. So, if you look at the vintage backs you can see here they have the three it's more elegantly decorated and then you can look at these ones less decoration oh but of course they use brass a lot of the silver and stuff is being used metals was being used and then you have these backings. You have the soft pad, the stopper, and again you have the pretty decorated backing. These, even if the earring itself wasn't all accurate, I mean all uh, accurate, all <laughs> Um, together and it was broken, you can sell these pieces and sell them in quantities of a dozen six pairs and they'll sell these are 1920s you can tell by the top of it it's real structured all the lines and then dangle earring these are beaded earrings these are going to be more of the 40s 
you can see the prongs, how high up they are. The higher they are, the more secure each individual bead is. So the care, they put more money into the metal, more time into enclosing these inside the setting. Also, you can see here that it was pieced on together, so welded, welded, and welded. This backing here is more of a 1940s backing. And it is also a clip with the filigree backing, but it is glued. So these are a little bit newer. And as shiny as those are, these are crystal, high-end crystal. Swarovski crystal. You can tell the quality just by looking at this reflection, as well as looking at the prongs. You see how the prongs come all the way over, all the way over? This is imperative to look for because uh, a lot of the new aged um, rhinestone jewelry, you'll notice that these prongs that they use are not as tall or long or secure. Even on these little small ones, they're real secure. See, see how they go all the way to the middle of the actual center? Those aren't going anywhere. These are also 1930s. See how they're all welded together? They're individual pieces welded one by one. Another indicator of really good earrings to pick up. You see that foil back there? They would foil back them to intensify the coloring of the stones. Definitely something to pay attention to. It's Marquista right there. And now let's go here. Now that we know about enamel, this is enamel brooch with gold edging. And back here, you can see the clasp. But you can see by the clasp, you can tell a lot by the class and the structure. It's all, they almost look like gears, or, well not gears, sorry. They're all like little screwed in parts. For example, over here, <clears throat> this is a brooch from the 1950s. They are very distinguished by the mechanisms in the back of how it's constructed constructed. So always think about 1950s when you see that. Also, take notice in how it's bent and then it comes up. It takes an extra effort to bend this and then bring it back up instead of just going straight over and clasp like some could be that you run across. Also, these type of seat Sea catches clasps here. This one came out in the early 1900s, but this is from the 1950s. But these didn't come into play until the early 1900s. Here, this is a cameo, even though it is costume jewelry. an animal cell. Also, I want you to look at these. These are shoe clips. And the difference between a shoe clip and a fur clip is that shoe clips are small and fur clips are much larger. And they usually come in pairs of two as well, but that's how you identify them. See how big that one is and how little these are? Shoe clip, 
fur clip. You can also see the depth of the teeth. If you put your finger on these ones, they'll cut you. I mean, like, they'll poke you hard. I mean, because they used to wear real fur, right? You can also tell these are early because they, they're made in the USA. And a lot of stuff was brought in from Japan, West Germany. And these are still made in the U.S., so they're older. And those would go for 20 bucks easily. Now, let's talk about celluloid. Celluloid is often confused with ivory. Speaking of ivory, we're not allowed to sell ivory even when it's vintage jewelry, like um, crimmets. I have some, I, or I had some ivy um, earrings and necklace, but although it was legal then, it's not legal now, and um, I don't know how far into letting the government know what you have to even uh, be able to own it. Like, I think you have to let the government know and all that. So I either use them in crafts or, um, and not for selling purposes, or there's a lot of uh, donation um, art, uh, artists that take donations like that and use them in their pieces as well, um, especially bone art, uh, bone artists that um, their medium is using ivory and different types of bones. Now this is celluloid. It's look to it's uh, made to look like ivory. Uh, you can see how each of them are carved here. The roses. You definitely have to make sure you look at these to make sure that's all and they're not damaged. And then you can see the clasp here. They do discolor a little bit, but for how old they are, it's a beautiful example of celluloid. I wouldn't sell this less than 38. And these aren't retail. This is eBay. I'm just spitting out here. Now, next, let's look at this necklace. You see how these setting the setting is different right you can see the gem on both sides it's not in a prong set like the Swarovski ones or encompassed in a in the backing these this is called bezel set my definitely definitely my favorite but these are bezel set and I prefer to buy my jewelry like this and a lot of people do and other people will prefer to have more beaded or even this is like the 80s the chain necklaces the golds the silvers so again it's all about preference and you can mark up or mark down the best thing to do is mark up and then go down as as, it, as time goes on but again i can tell you i sell everything eventually and i i just put it on and i just let it sit and it sells i can say jewelry sells the most out of all my stuff. This is also is Lucite. Lucite is a clear plastic and they put this is confetti inside but this is uh, Coro. Pay attention to this type of, of um, chain. These chain links like this especially the, like the rectangle are older. We're looking 40s, 50s. This is a choker. And the backing, you can see how these are constructed. Each individual clasped on through here. And then each uh, lucite piece was made and they were put together on each one of these and then they were clasped together. So there's so much detail in each part of this that um, they had to take time in doing. So if you look at earrings nowadays, you would see probably this whole piece would be connected as one base instead of individually linked. 
and then a piece on top, and then the lobster claw clasp. There we go. Here it is. And that's a lobster claw. Now when you, you get these, I want you to also pay attention to the hook. It needs to have a hook. If it's vintage, they didn't, or a button clasp or an actual like hook clasp. Um, but you'll find the name of the designer here. And this one's Coro. And I wouldn't post this for less than $28. And I wouldn't, I could go up. Now I also want you to look at this clasp. This is more of a 1980s clasp. You'll see this a lot. It's right before the lobster clasp came out. But that necklace with the matching earrings, I would definitely post that for no less than $28.99. And you can even start it at $33. I also want to show you these. These are three dimensional floral bezel set, as we learned earlier, bezel set, rhinestone, deep prong set, clip-on earrings from the 40s.